Welcome back folks, hope you're well, fear not. I know I'm behind the desk at the minute, but uh, this is only because when I was out in the field doing this video, I forgot to press the record button when I was filming the intro. What an idiot. So today's video, we're gonna be out shooting the start of the heather season, which is always an exciting uh, time for landscape photographers here in the UK. And uh, I guess I'm no different. So we're up to Grange Fell above Borrowdale in this vlog, fantastic views all, all round and a uh, favourite area of mine. I did try and actually film this location last year without any success. It was absolutely awful conditions. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, without further ado, let's get out there. Okay folks, here we are on uh, Bruntfell, which is part of this sprawling area of Grangefell, which is a fantastic place to come and explore as a photographer any time of the year really. At the minute it's very verdant and green, but because we're in August we're starting to get the heather coming out. And then specifically if you look across towards uh, King's Howe where there's loads and loads of silver birches, when you're coming into autumn, that area over there is a fantastic place to photograph as well. Uh, so yeah, bit of a bit of a photographer's paradise up here. Now the conditions today aren't so hot. Uh, we've got passing clouds and changeable weather, which is which is good. Uh, but the light's a little harsh at the minute, which you can see from the light on my bald head. Uh, but it is a little better than what I had last year. I came up here to try and film a video last year, and it was an absolute waste of time basically uh, the cloud was down to your knees you couldn't see the tops of the fells behind me and there was just zero light so in the sort of interest of not sending you all to sleep i didn't film that because uh, trying to film it myself was boring me to tears so uh so yeah the first shot that i'm going to focus on here though is one that i've looked at on previous visits which is this view towards derwent water and skidder we've got these beautiful big slabs dotted around the fell here and it's really just a case of trying to just fit one that you know matches the uh matches your eye and the view and uh i think i found one here that uh, works pretty well so we're going to head over and get set up Okay, so this shot, just uh, a little bit dicey. Let me just get this down to where I'm at. There we go. Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was filming a whole spiel to the camera there from where I'd initially got set up and then realised I was making a schoolboy error that I did last time I was here, which is from this viewpoint, looking back down towards Derwent Water, and then you've got Skiddo in the distance, I was just cutting the bottom of the lake off and uh, I don't know why I hadn't noticed it there, it's an obvious thing, but I've just retreated back up a little craggy bit here behind me and it's just given me that little bit of extra elevation so I'm just not cutting the lake off behind this big prominent rock here in the middle ground. Now the light is just starting to get out, I've been sat here for an absolute age, as I was saying I was filming a bit earlier and uh, I did manage to get something with a bit of light but looking at the composition now I'd made a bit of an error so I'm trying to redo this again but uh, yeah looking up it might be on the way in the next five minutes uh, just a, a quick point um, someone made a comment on my last video regarding the the image from oh, here I'll just sit down it's a bit more comfortable um, yeah someone had made a, a comment on the the image on the last video saying it was a bit foreground sort of rock heavy which uh to be honest when i looked at it again uh that guy probably had a point i'll i'll have to sift through the comments to to find who it was 
Um, but I guess the point I'm making is that don't feel like if you if you feel like you've got something constructive to say on an image, whether it's mine or anyone else's, as long as it's done in the right way and you're not a dickhead, then by all means, uh, you know, if you feel like you've got some critique or some advice, um, you know, feel free to comment. I, I've always actively encouraged open discussion with these sort of things. I think we live in a day and age now where people are, are frightened to open their mouth with, especially around photography, uh, everything is wonderful and positive and you know without wanting to get onto a, a rant here um i don't think there's enough open discussion on stuff like that so you see any of my images and you think there's something constructive that you could add i'll always listen i might not agree but uh, i think it's important that people should be able to uh, have open discussions about these things um but the reason i bring up this point is that uh, the shot that i'm looking at here again is quite rock foreground heavy but when you look at the landscape up here it's integral to it and these rocks aren't just you know your average rocks i mean the the giant slabs almost let me just um grab a shot here right just sit down problem with that these nikons is that they once they go into sleep mode they keep knocking the two second timer off now i know you can put the exposure delay mode on and i haven't put it on there but um yeah it's a bit of a pain but uh yeah this composition it is quite rock foreground heavy um but it i think it balances pretty well we've got a nice zigzag leading from right to left and they're very shapely these rocks and now the light's just starting to get out it's hitting the side of them and it's giving them a bit of three dimensionality we've got some lovely layers going on here with the light and the shadow and uh, even though it's you know three o'clock in the afternoon on a summer's day you can shoot interesting images in these conditions um if you've got enough cloud and changeable weather like we have today so it's yeah it's all good uh the heather is a little early i would say uh what are we 3rd of august today it's i thought it would be a bit more advanced than it is to be honest but um anyway this was always a shot that i was going to come back to in the next couple of weeks and try and get again on my own time i think without the, the need to do a video but um but yes, lovely spot up here. And right across Grange Fell, there's so much to explore. Um, you know, I've been up here already for about four hours and uh, yeah, flew by. <laughs> so anyway, the technical spiel with this shot, uh, I think about 30 millimeter F11 bracketing because we've got quite high dynamic range on the sky here. And uh, yeah, I'll pick the best one. And uh, if you have anything constructive, uh, you'd like to add with this image feel free to leave a comment and uh, yeah here's the best one Okay, I think I've got what I came for there. Looking at the cloud situation, it's one of these where there's an awful lot of low cloud and the sun at the minute is just above it. So I don't really see an awful lot of advantage in sticking around here in the late evening because once that sun dips behind that cloud, it's gonna be a goner. So I'm gonna quickly just move on to something else. There's a little knoll just over the way here with some more interesting slabs to work with. So I think I'll I'll have a little look at that. Okay, we've made it up onto the next Oh, am I recording? Yeah, I'm recording. Ah, the joys of making these videos. Uh, yeah, I've made it up onto the next knoll, and the first composition that I wanted to shoot, I can't really do at the minute because the, the sun's just dipped behind the cloud and there's no light hitting the scene. So I've just turned the camera about 45 degrees towards uh, what will be the back of the Langdale Pikes here, and uh, I've also got the 24 to 200 on. Some lovely layering going on there, and of course, when I saw the light hitting it, I had to change lenses. 
and then by the time I've done that I've missed the shot so I'm just waiting here for this light to pop back out uh, hopefully it will it looks like there's plenty of blue sky behind that bit of cloud there so it should do I sometimes feel when you stood on top of a fella like this and you've got the long lens on it can feel a bit snapshotty if you like uh, it's easy to stand in a big vista like this and you've got loads of mountains around you and just start firing off long lens stuff in all directions but you've still got to compose these shots exactly the same way you would any other and it's got to have some interest in it it can't well for me anyway it shouldn't just be just here's a record of a nice mountain with some light on it the scene in front of me it had nice light hitting the dry stone wall which was giving a nice sense of scale in this shot um, now it's disappeared for the time being but if it comes back i'll take this shot and uh hopefully it'll look all right the light in the distance is absolutely brilliant but the bottom third of the frame is in deep shadow and it doesn't really work so let's see ah ah trying to do two things at once as soon as i got set up for that other shot the light pops out so we're back on shot one from this second knoll now this was one that again i looked at last year didn't work at all because the view looking towards the fells here you couldn't see the mountains basically and it was just a pile of rocks today we can see the fells there's a nice bit of layering going on fells in deep shadow foreground here nicely lit if i'm being honest the light's a bit harsh but uh, it's one of those where looking at the way the clouds are I think this might be as good as I get before the light disappears basically so I'm going to grab this and then a bit like the one before probably come back up here in a few weeks try and reshoot it again uh, 30 millimeter on the wide angle lens and uh, just focus right in the middle of the frame because no depth of field concerns here there's nothing in front of me for another 50 yards uh, so yeah I quite like this shot to be honest I like the composition conditions aren't that great today but uh, yeah want to come back to I think uh, but still what a view all right the weather's starting to get a bit more interesting uh, a bit of a shower come through there uh, I did I did try and take a shot with the rainbow uh, I think some people fall into the trap sometimes with rainbows of thinking that every picture is amazing when there's a rainbow but there was no shot there uh, there was a nice bit of light and uh, I'll show you what it looked like but uh, but yeah not much of a shot but I've gone back to this uh, composition back towards Langdale Pikes there we've got some nice light now hitting those dry stone walls I was talking about that's giving it that scale so I'm gonna fire off a few more shots here as the lights changing and I'll show you the best one I don't know if I'm gonna do an awful lot more filming from this point because uh, as I said the clouds pretty low there and uh, I thought it was going to be the best of it earlier but I think this might just be the best of it that I'm getting it now so anyway I'll put this one on the screen so I'm gonna leave this one here I think not a bad little session a uh, decent little recce for a few weeks time when the heather's a bit further on when we when we get better conditions although it's been a pretty nice afternoon to be honest weather's starting to close in now hence why i'm gonna try and get off the fell side here before i get soaked uh, and also some good miles in the legs i'm in the middle of doing a lot of training at the minute um in my latest newsletter which has just come out i'll put a link in the description for that go and have a look at it a uh, great little feature with fellow lake district photographer called mike prince who does some absolutely fantastic work and was certainly an inspiration of mine uh, continues to be uh, certainly when i first started looked at a lot of his work and some brilliant stuff from around here and uh, yeah continue to enjoy his work but uh, in that newsletter uh, i talk a little bit about i'm going to be going back in the next well the foreseeable future really to back to doing a lot more mountain stuff this was my first love in landscape photography but when I took on the gallery back in 2018 I had to for commercial reasons and common sense I had to tailor my photography a little bit more towards a commercial crowd but uh, now that I'm five five and a half years into doing it full-time um, I think 
it's time to draw a line under that work. And uh, to that end, in the newsletter, it talks a little bit about an upcoming book that I'm working on. I haven't set a fixed date for it. Uh, you'll be the first to know about it, obviously, when it gets uh, when it gets sorted. The design of it's all done. I'm just working on now sort of costings and the boring stuff behind the scenes. But hopefully, with a bit of luck, I'll be able to start taking pre-orders for the book uh, before Christmas. Um, so, yeah, look out for that. But as I say, I'll, uh, I'll do a proper uh, sort of... I'll talk about it properly in a for future video. So, yeah, really enjoyed this afternoon. Uh, always nice to be up here. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Keep liking and subscribing, and I will see you on the next one.